Hi Tyler. Hi Callum. Ben. Will. James. Joel. Thanks for dropping in. Not sure how interesting this one will be, but at least I can answer some questions and stuff. So I'm just going to start, really. Seems to be a bit of a theme so far of, like, just nefarious, mustachioed characters I'm stuck in. So I'll do one of those to warm up. Hi Richard, hi Mr. Ken, hi Gabrielle, Michelangelo, good name. Sorry, I didn't manage to stream. I only did one last week, I think. Um, just Christmas has gone a bit crazy for us. We've had some quite big problems getting this book out on time. So we did a print run that went quite wrong. And the cutting machine broke. So that set the whole print back by over a week, really. So having had initial copies, they had to sort of, um, I think my printer, bless him, who's amazing, did, had to, in the end, throw a bunch of them away because they were just so um, messed up. So we had that and the usual Christmas colds, then uh, postal strikes in the UK. So it's all gone a bit, it's all got very stressful. We've got the books in stock. I'm still limiting it to um, make sure I get on top of these orders first and then we'll release more copies next, early next year when we know we're on on top of it all and so they will be available um, but it's been a bit of a stressful few days with a lot of catching up to do now and it looks like the only orders we can really guarantee well not even guarantee but hope we'll get out to people before Christmas are now UK orders because of the postal strikes um, and the delays on the print. So I can only apologize to anyone who's ordered and say I'm really sorry and hope that you, you know, like the book if you still wanna pick up a copy. Uh, someone's asked if I'm dual wielding today. I could try a dual wield uh, if you really want. <laughs> Hi, Willie Presetio. Good morning, Oran. Morning, Millie Wiggs, Exawodia. Alexandra Moishino Hiya Love Bistrom Her morning 
thanks for dropping in. Callum, what's on my Christmas list? Do you know what? I don't really need anything uh, without being, you know, I'm 51. I just, I just need a, to be able to get off the sofa without groaning and making noises and nice bike ride. Um, I think I've asked for a travel mug so when I'm walking the dog I can have a coffee. That seemed quite a nice dad Prezi. Tyler. Yes, you may, we may well um, and, and forcibly ask for your help with the packing some more books, Tyler. Hi, Adam Hilton, yeah, good to see you again. So I can give you, actually, while we're here, I can give you a quick show through the book. I'll just sign this one. I get a sneak preview for my YouTube followers, subscribers, friends. I'm trying to keep all the uh, level up drawings. They're all this sort of level, basically. I'm not. I don't haven't really done many full figures. I just because one of the things I'm enjoying practicing is like sort of um, really trying to simplify the lines and still get a lot of character into the into the face and, and you know the, the the portrait as it were. So quite enjoying just using the black wing on this rather nice sort of lilac -y paper so yeah and there it is so little dedication to the man and then it's a much bigger book. It's, it's actually really pleased with the paper quality. It's quite a heavy, it feels a bit sketchbooky. It's not too glossy either. Um, 200 pages, we've got a few more of these, which I know they're a bit of a pain because they've got the spine in the middle, but I like them in there as a, I think they just break up the pace of the book as well. And you can sort of make out what's going on quite nicely. A lot of Mecca stuff this year for some reason. And I don't know if that's a change from previous years. My friends on the Donny Chain Gang, that was done for an ex-pro called Russ. Bit of a uh, Star Wars. Krenko mob boss full figure there from the uh, Magic the Gathering games. Bit of a Krampus. Naruto, which everybody seemed to like when I did that. Yeah, Callum, that was Greipel's bike design there, yeah. Yeah. If, uh, pull back a bit, actually. Batman and the Joker. So you get the gist, just more, more, just, it's just character design, really. Just brain farts and character design. 
50 pages more than the previous books because I'd missed a year out, you see. So I could have made it bigger, but it was, it starts to have problems with the size that you can fit it in the format. So we, we stuck to just a, another 50 pages. So it's a heavier book, but it feels nicer in the hand, if you know what I mean. So it's quite a substantial. I've put some of my prints in there as well, just so that, you know, you don't have to order the expensive limited edition prints. You can still see the artwork. So yeah, a lot of pencil, pen, brush pen, some ink wash stuff. He-Man, Batman. That was the uh, pirate piece we actually live streamed um, on here, I think, over three sessions. So that's quite nice that I managed to get that scanned and, and fitted into the, into the book, so. Only one cyclist sketch this time. That's Wout van Aert, the Belgian superstar. And I quite, I left a few unfinished pieces in, which I quite like. Just always used to like that when I was flicking through other people's sketchbooks, when you see stuff that's sort of planned out, but not resolved. I don't know, quite like that idea. One of the problems I had with some of them as well is they came back printed back with back to front. So the front page was at the back, which doesn't look bad really. I actually quite liked it until you got to here where that page was there and that page was there and that's problematic. So there's four super collectible backwards books. I'll call them the... Super rare, I don't know. Collector's edition. <laughs> Michael and Joe, I have a question if you don't mind. How did you get into doing illustrations for board games? Um, as I've said on a couple of these live streams, Michelangelo is just, I was quite, oh, well, I was more than quite lucky. I was very fortunate really to have built up a, a sort of significant um, name as a, like a fantasy artist really, um, just through the seven years I spent at um, Games Workshop. So. For me, the work always came to me, you know, it was companies who wanted, when I went freelance, who wanted maybe, you know, the quality that I was putting out at Games Workshop and also a bit of that sort of, not kudos, but, you know, sort of because you're affiliating with quite a well-known big board game company, it sort of can add a bit of um, weight to your product, I suppose. So I think that's what happened with me, really. It was not, never had to tout portfolios around. And to be honest, when I've had to do sample pieces for, you know, I had to do a couple for um, a PC game once, I think. Roman one, I can't remember which one. They asked me to do a pitch and I've never got the work I've done on a pitch. They've always said, yeah, it's not quite what they were looking for. So it's hard to know when you're starting out whether you 
you know, should be really focusing your portfolio on a specific um, client or, or project. I think it's worth maybe trying to at least taper or um, adjust your portfolio accordingly. But in my opinion, I'd like to see someone who could work across, um, you know, various mediums and various um, sort of techniques and skill sets is probably also gives you that option of, um, you know, if you're not the guy they looking for for that job you were going for, you might be the guy they're looking for for another one you know something different that's just in your skill set but you know they didn't know that you had those if you know what I mean Do you manage day? Do you ink in a comic book style with a lot of shadow? I'd love to say I did, and I was good at it, and I could do like those, you know, crazy minimalist panels where it's all left, barely described. But no, I'm I'm not very good at that. I think I'm not very organised. I need to be. You need to sort of. You can't really sketch a lot of that stuff on the fly. I think you need to be. Um, sort of planning the whole thing out a bit more and maybe doing some roughs and which I'll do more for big paintings and things like that but not so much for well I don't I don't do comics so that's the other issue there Adam any chance of a female Ivor or, or the Joker of course Adam yeah yeah no problemo spread good vibes how can we get a copy of your sketchbook well you can go to my website at the moment um, there's only signed copies left available that's because we put a limit on how many we released with these level up sketches because they do take a lot of time well i mean they're not they well yeah they do they take up quite a bit of time in the day and evenings to to do them all so um we've only released a hundred of these initially to do before christmas just so that one, we get a bit of a break, and two, we were hoping to fulfil orders, which has gone a bit um, wrong. So af if you're looking for the level up after Christmas, we'll release more uh, on the website. I'll make an announcement when it's available. So no panic. It's not like they're out of stock. It's um, just we don't want to be inundated with too many orders. Kerberos 25, are you going to do a big Kapinski 2? Um, I hope so, yeah. We, I was talking with my publisher, JC, about the option just the other day, so it would probably be a case of um, more of collecting out-of-print books together again, so 
which for me would be volumes three and four. Um, and then, add, as we did before, adding in a little bit of sort of colour work, most likely from the, the vast amount I've done for um, Cool Mini or not. So that's probably the plan. Merry Christmas, Daniel. Farouk, see you later, mate. The Void, good morning. What's my thought on digital art? Oh, is this AI art or just digital art? Because they're two different things. My daughter's just come in. Are you going to say hello in the live stream? Hi. I don't know if they heard you say louder. Hi. <laughs> there we go. Sketchbook in hand, ready for action. <laughs> just digital void. Uh, yeah, I have no problem with digital art uh, at all. Um, just not maybe that good at it myself <laughs> if i'm honest i tried it for a long time but just and I, I i could achieve a level but i just found myself just frustrated all the time by having too many options and and i just found it confusing there's so I could change everything endlessly, that in the end I didn't know what to do or where to go, or who could help me. So, I, I, in, I think when I use it, now I do still use it occasionally on projects. When I do that, I would tend to use a, as minimal layers as possible, and like maybe one or two very simple brushes that just get the effects that I'm, I'm, I'm needing and, and leave it at that really without sort of um, making it any more complicated than I need to because the way I looked at it was if I was working at home on a, well, working at, if I was working traditionally, I'd have like, you know, one pencil or two pencils, an eraser, some paper. If I was painting, I'd have maybe four or five brushes and a palette that was as limited as I could get it really for for the image. So I tried to follow the same um, principles with that. Hello, Hui Fan. Alexandra, how do you process for these sketches? Do you take a few seconds? Uh, yeah, I sort of do, or I'll, I do a lot of hats. I think it was Jung Gi who pointed out they're quite useful as well because they set a sort of um, a perspective almost immediately for the face. So, you know, if you look, if you're looking up, then you do an ellipse. So uh, I often put a hat on, plus it, it sort of helps to give them a bit of character and a bit of, um, you know, placement in something or somewhere, some kind of, you know, time period or environment or 
And then I spend a lot of time with the drawings of, like, I would say in my head spinning around a lot are M Mobius, obviously. His work, just the sort of lovely simplicity of the lines and uh, Junkies, obviously, for the same um, qualities, really. And um, and then try to just develop an interesting, relatively quick character with a bit of a, you know, a theme to it. Tarada as well, like or thinking of those heads that Tarada does of the, usually the female girls, uh, female figures with um, sort of sci-fi, steampunky, Bits stuck all over them. I like those, they're good. Did you, uh, Will Darm, did you end up studying hats for a while or was it just bits from full costumes, you remember? A bit of both. I still do struggle with brims a bit sometimes. I've sort of come up with a technique where I think of the brim, especially on like top hats and those more formal old fashioned hats. I think of the brim as like, I don't know if they have it in the US, but in the UK, they have these crisps or chips called Pringles. So that's the brim shape. And then you stick the hat bit on top. So that's how I'm trying to remember to do those. <laughs> Keep it simple. But the sci-fi ones are a bit more fun. You can sort of play around. And, and I actually did a manga a female manga character request yesterday, which probably was turned out quite good for me. Normally, I, I struggle a bit with the manga stuff, but that was good. It was a female character. I can't remember her name from Helsing, is it? Hey Mark, how you doing? Good boy, Carl. Could you describe your impressions of Junkie's work when you first discovered him? As you mentioned earlier, you met him on Massive Black, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I met him sort of... Um, I think, you know, it wasn't that long after he sort of really exploded onto the, the sort of western scene I think there was people like a lot of those guys at Massive Black in San Francisco were quite on the had their fingers on the pulse of the art world they had a, a, a forum and um, you know a bit like art station which was um very active was it cg hub i think it was linked to it as well I, can't, I don't remember now so they knew a lot of the guys that were sort of on the scene and doing good stuff and i think i'd seen it someone had sent me a james gurney youtube video he posted so that was about my first sort of exposure to what he was doing um and um, obviously, uh, the event in San Francisco, I was lucky enough to sort of meet him and, you know, it was a lot of fuss and, um, 
attention about him being there. Um, so, and me and my brother Stefan were there, both a little bit confused as to why we'd been invited, but we, they kindly had invited us, and so we didn't really know what we were doing, and a bit nervous and felt a bit out of our depth. Well, I did anyway. I think Steph was um, very similar. Um, but he, he was really sort of, him and Hyunjin really made, uh, you know, a good, in, well, made an effort to sort of spend time with everyone. And um, they took some pictures together and had a bit of a laugh. And, and we sort of just hit it off fairly quickly. As I've said before, without the, regardless of the sort of language barrier, and um, you know, sort of just had a laugh. Um, but when I started to look at him draw, I mean, really, you know, I was the same every time I watched him draw. I just probably like you guys. I just wanted to sit and watch him draw. Really, that's all I wanted to do. It was not. It's not just because I was amazed by what he did, which I was, it was also, it was sort of um, playful and um, quite, it sounds a bit, uh, not hippie-ish, but it was quite meditative to watch. It wasn't a sort of, it doesn't didn't feel like a big sort of show-offy show. It just felt like somebody just putting their thoughts down and or their train of thought down quite freely and you know in a in a manner that really uh, was not only um, sort of technically you know incredible but also um very um simple and refined um, whereas a lot of the other people who were there were sort of doing big you know very big um, quite um, sort of quite detailed or, or quite involved paintings and uh, whereas his was this sort of I think it struck me that it came from that, um, maybe that Buddhist sort of, to me there's a, there's a, there's a sort of resemblance to the, the sort of art that's been informed by Buddhist, Buddhism and this sort of retelling of stories and, you know, um, that it's a, a means to sort of, put a narrative down, I guess, like they say with the manga, to, to tell a story across um, a picture rather than it just being, you know, like if you look at Western art that's influenced by the church, it's much, it, it's a totally different um, affair, you know, with a lot of uh, sort of, you know, s single images from the Bible or, or pictures of popes and things like that. His looked like this, always about a journey and people going places and fantastic creatures that were met on the way. And I, I quite like that straight away. So that was one of the first impressions that it had on me. That the, Also, the, just the sort of culturally, how different it was. Um, right down to using the Pentel brush, which I, you know, obviously, meeting him I diligently went out and bought it and decided I was going to learn to do that and had about you know sort of three or four months of just throwing this thing across the living room and shouting and just couldn't get my sort of head around it really why I couldn't get to grips with it but again I think it's that that's a you know ability to draw and write with the brush is not something that's natural to a Western 
hand. So uh, that was a bit of a long answer. So sorry, sorry, I'm waffling. But yeah, it was amazing as well, obviously. Hi, Mortis champion, Will. Oh, go grab your Pringles, Will. Nice to see you, Adam. I'll see you next time. Milliwigs. Ah, uh, yes, I can see the similarity, James Jean, yeah. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. The Void, every time we watch Jungi's Avukat, I don't really know what he's and Junjin is talking about. Yeah, you're probably missing a lot. They're very funny people and they had a great sort of a rapport. So, Callum, my desk is, I've got an electric desk which raises up and down and a really cheap tabletop um, angled drawing board which is what I'm working on here it just works for me Wes Mindo thank you that's very kind of you and be joy oh thanks mate that's kind words indeed Pringle. Hi Lex. So, whoa, dear, can you draw a really scary looking man that has a hat with a cute QI logo on it? Uh, possibly, yeah. 
how scary? This is the question. Lex, um, what's my opinion on AI? Uh, well, it, it's becoming an issue, isn't it, really? Let's face it. At first I was sort of a little bit, oh, here we go again, you know, another thing that is going to be all over socials for six months and then disappear, and that's what I'm still sort of hoping. But the... Um, the simple fact that, you know, it's sort of people are having their images sort of taken and then ran through these generators and claimed as new art by the person who's... That's, that seems to me pretty poor. Um and sort of indicative of this, um, the, the nature of social media, really. Everybody, nobody really, well, I suppose it's not just social media, but nobody wants to really have to do the hard graft to get good at stuff. Especially, it feels to me anyway, these days, it's, it, it's hard to explain to people when I tell them, you know, they say, how do you get to your level? And you tell them you do it for, you know, 25 years. That's a bitter pill to swallow for some people because they want to be good quicker. That's just to get the level I'm at now. It doesn't mean I was crap 15 years ago, you know. So you've got to sort of... Um, but for me, I, 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 I've always enjoyed that and that process of learning and improving and uh, sort of that journey is part of what I want to be on. And to then skip all of that and just put it into a machine well, uh, uh, and let the machine do it for me and then say it's mine I just don't think I could do that. It just, just, just doesn't seem, you know, right. I, I don't mind people playing with it and, you know, experimenting it and using it for, to come up with designs and things like that for their own work. But to then, um, you know, offer it as a print when it's somebody else's prompts and the such is, seems a bit poor show, really. Uh, on the part of artists who are trying to, you know, make a living and get their stuff seen and out there and noticed. So hopefully they'll work out a way to regulate that and, you know, people will be respectful and, and not, not do that too much. Hi, Radu. So, unfortunately, I don't think your book will be with you yet. I said it earlier in the stream, we've had a massive sort of set of problems getting these out on time. Um, so, basically, um, we've had to reprint because they weren't... Um, there was a problem with the print run. So the only ones that we can we've, look like may get out before Christmas are to UK. So I'm really sorry about that. And you can DM me on Insta if you want to talk about, or through the website if you want to talk about, you know, a refund or anything. Um, 
it's just gone a bit um, wrong. So I do apologise for that. So here's the really scary guy with cute QI cap on, but it looks like I'm better at doing really scary guys than I am at cute QI, which is probably because I've spent more time doing really scary looking guys than I have cute kiwi teddy bears. Actually looks a bit like me this morning. Okay, Radu, I'm re as I say, I'm really sorry about that. Um, yeah. Hi, Sadiq. Lex, did you do your annual Christmas? I did a Christmas card, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure where I've put it. Maybe I'll show that on the next one. Um, yeah. Did you ever do anatomical studies? Analytical or anatomical? 
Waters champion. I did a lot of anatomy. I did do a lot of anatomy um, sketches, yeah, when I was first starting out. Socrates, hope you're well, mate. Fair in the taxi. <laughs> you, I hope you're watching the road, Socrates, not focusing on my silly drawings. Oh, thanks, Alexandria. Yeah. yeah, if you're enjoying it, please give it a shout and share and thumbs up. Or, all that sort of stuff. Keep um, keep it moving, and then we'll have to decide what to do for the next live stream. I was thinking maybe a Mecca Santa because I posted an older one I did on the front of, um, I think, a big Kapinski um, blank cover. I posted one of those the other day on Reels and uh, seemed to be quite popular and fitting for this time of year. So maybe a Mecca Santa sketch, I don't know. What do you guys think?
Nolan, Robin Hood, yeah, that's a good one. Robo claws, yeah. Yeah. Max Santa, real chin strap, void. Chimp in spacesuit portrait. Yeah, I could do that. Definitely. Not beyond my skill set, I don't think. Hey, Piyush, hey, Hassan Ali. Trapdoor plays, can you recommend some books for human anatomy? I wouldn't be able to recommend a singular book, but I think there's a, um, a lot of resources out there. Uh, if you're looking for that sort of thing, it's, um, you know, a matter of sort of, doing a bit of research on on the book and then you know just kind of diving in I used um, medical anatomy as well as um, artist anatomy when I was learning so I sort of Gray's anatomy to see a real in depth of the sort of structure and you know, musculature and things like that, that was useful. And then I think I had the Bridgman book, which was quite a good one. A couple of Andrew Loomis, quite traditional stuff, but you know, they're all, all the information's there. Um, and um, what else did I have? I think I had a book by a Hungarian guy just called anatomy for artists um but then you know i was looking at a lot of other sort of very classically trained artists at the time so pulling you know ideas from what they're doing and looking at their sort of skill sets and, and, and thinking where i could improve my own really. Did you watch the World Cup? I did watch the World Cup final and I'm really not a fan of football normally, especially when England are playing because it's inevitably this sort of huge build-up in the media here and then the also inevitable sort of disappointment and, you know, commentators saying, well, didn't they do well? And... You know, they get paid a lot to do well, so, you know. 
But I did watch the final and I thought it was amazing. Absolutely. I watched it with my lad, Art, who's, he's not into football either, really. But we put it on. He's got a TV in, the, in his room and we sat and watched it. And it was just fantastic. Really, really enjoyed it. I didn't really care who won, but it was uh, quite the spectacle. I sort of shame it was ended up in penalties, really. I always feel bad for those, you know, really young lads who miss them. And, but none of them did such a bad job as Harry Kane of the penalty, so... Uh, <laughs> I don't think they should feel too guilty. Yeah, that's right. Ma is it Magula? Magula? Bridgman's great. You can get the you can get the PDF for that. Uh, also, I remember finding a lot of the Loomis stuff online as well because it's a lot of it is out of print or hard to get your hands on, really. So um, it might be worth looking for that if you're looking for the Bridgman as well. The Andrew Loomis is quite sort of traditional, like. But, you know, a very clever way of teaching, really. Also, I don't know how many videos are on there, but on Kazone Online, I've done a video with those guys and Jung Gi did a video. But the one that's also really, really interesting is uh, there's a video by Hyun Jin, who is an amazing teacher. Um, and it has a really clever way of sort of breaking things down for you to understand how to draw it, if you know what I mean, relating it to other shapes, animals and things like that. It's really, really interesting. Pedro Assis, no, not Stonehouse, that's another artist, he's incredible as well, no, it's Hyun Jin Kim, uh, he's the guy with the long hair that you see in a lot of the Jung Gi videos, he's a phenomenal uh, teacher and watercolour artist and charcoal drawer, painter, drawer, sketcher, you know what I mean. What's your opinion, Corey Graham, of the blind contour exercise? Do you know what? I'll be honest, Corey, I have no idea what that means. It sounds very technical and a little bit intimidating. Maybe I'll look it up when I finish and I can learn that. Do a bit of... 
teaching myself. Troll, love Bistrom, a troll, okay, maybe the next one. How long have I been going for? Maybe the le next one is the last one and do a troll. So any questions and stuff, fire away now. If there could be only one, draw one subject the rest of your life, what would it be? Each. Um, I, I think I'd probably say portrait, portraiture. Can I say that? Is that a good option? Because it's what I'm sort of naturally drawn to and probably quite strong at but it's sort of also quite you know uh, sort of infinite possibilities with it so and I, I do like that whole thing of trying to really capture the likeness of someone and you know almost pushing some of the boundaries of you know it being slightly caricatured or so yeah that's probably what I'd say or space monkeys Do you ever get inspiration from game art like God of War? Um, yeah, a little bit, but I don't. I just don't game as much as I used to. Really, I don't have time, and my uh, you know schedule's so busy. Really, that to spend hours gaming would be probably a bit counterproductive for me. Tips on fantasy drawings uh, from Trapdoor plays, I would say start with the weirdest real nature things and work from there because there's some very strange stuff out there in the natural world. I have used mag Magula Magula, those pure graphite pencils, and I did use them for a long time at Faber Castell. Pit graphite I used to use but since I've switched to these black wing I just find they're just such a, a great um, sort of weight to them and they just feel right 
So I've stuck with those for quite a significant amount of time now. Um, I'd say I've been using them for maybe a year. Um, nothing else as far as pencils go. I have, well, I started watching uh, Daniel Wong. I started watching the troll movie, but it was very late at night. So I put subtitles on and then I got a bit annoyed by the subtitles and fell asleep after a whiskey. So I haven't finished it. Derek Zoolander with Magnum look. So you're talking about Zoolander doing blue steel but with a big moustache like Magnum PI. It's a good combo if that's what you're thinking. It's, uh, it's a look I'd like to rock. So I'm going to make this troll probably the last one for this live stream. And anybody with any sort of tips for the next one, give me a shout now. If you think Mecha Santa would be good or Robo Claws or whatever we're calling it, or I could do more of this stuff and just chatting or probably would leave doing i was going to do an oil painting at some point but i probably would leave that till uh the new year now because it will be one that i would like to get a run at and not just sort of do it and then leave it for two weeks over christmas or what however long and not come back to it while it's sort of still rocking and rolling if you know what i mean um love bistron yes i use the matte ones exclusively really I, i've tried i think i've tried the 602 but i think i prefer black maybe i'll order some 602s again and give them another go and recheck they are just a, a great and really versatile pencil i sound like i'm doing a paid promotion don't i, I assure you i'm not getting paid to talk about them I will do the oil painting. That is on the list of things to do. It's just about organising an actual image and sort of there'll be a lot more, not prep work, but I'll have to talk you through process stuff. So it'll be a multiple, like, stage, you know, to fit in, in an hour and an hour and a half is um, not... It's not going to work for the whole thing, so I'll have to break it down into chunks, but I will do it, I promise. Angelina Lowe, how do you overcome the frustration that you'll never be as good as 
artists you admire. Um, I just don't be frustrated by it because I've learned that even if I was as good as them, then I wouldn't like them as much because I'd be able to do it myself. Do you know what I mean? The reason that I love them so much is I can't do it. That's that's the cool thing. It's like when you watch sports and, you know, like I'm a huge cycling fan and I can ride a bike, I can ride it quite well, but I can't do what the guys I admire and watch on professionally do. It, it's beyond my comprehension. But if I could, I wouldn't be interested in it. I'd be riding it or I don't know what I'd be doing. So I, I'm not frustrated by it, really. I, I sort of welcome it because it means you've found someone who's really inspiring you, whose work's incredible, and that, you know, hopefully a little bit of that will sort of be absorbed into your style or your armoury and you can um you know improve as an artist and be a uh, you know sort of look at it as a you, you're learning from someone you should always try to learn from the best it's no point in learning from the mediocre so if you if you're learning trying to learn from the best it's going to be frustrating because they're the best it's don't don't be frustrated. Just enjoy it. There we go. Signing off with a a troll, Christmas troll. I don't know what makes him Christmassy. Actually, um, he's not Christmassy at all, is he? But anyway, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the questions, always good to answer and really helps sort of me, you know, sort of organise this stuff and also clarify a few things that I'm learning myself. So thank you again. Um, and I will hopefully maybe try and jump on on Friday. I'll make sure I notify everyone. As I said before, share, hit share, like, thumbs up, all that stuff. And, um, and yeah, have a good week, a couple of days, and I'll, I'll see you next time. And thanks for tuning in.